So welcome back to another episode and welcome to my game hype. I want to talk about some games today that have been announced lately and some games we've gotten some updates on. And a lot of these are really exciting games. Some of them like Street Fighter 6 I've never talked about on the channel yet, which is ridiculous. We're going to do that today. I will ask you guys, first of all, what are some upcoming games that you're looking forward to? Maybe by the end of the year, early next year, let me know down below. Now, there's been so many big events going on lately, it's been a little bit overwhelming. So many game announcements, it's just like, oh my god, like the Nintendo Direct was RPG Overload. And we're still trying to get through Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and they just keep on piling these games on. It's like, oh my god, I gotta, gotta negotiate um, what I'm gonna talk about and what I'm gonna, gonna play in the future, because there is so much. We live in a time of absolute overwhelming uh, video games, which is not a bad thing. There's a lot of different choices. Now, I want to talk about one game here, is Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6. This is an interesting one for me. Like, I've not talked about it on the channel, and there was a reason why up till now. I wasn't that into it. I wasn't that hyped for it. I saw some of the early trailers and I'm like, okay. Like it, like it didn't have that massive jump in graphics from, you know, like going from like three to four or anything like that. Like even going from four to five was kind of nice. It was a nice upgrade, but it didn't blow your mind. And I don't think we're ever gonna get, gonna get that big momentous change from going like from Street Fighter two to three again. But I wasn't really big into the hype of it. I thought, okay, it's interesting. And oh, what you can walk around the world and interact with it and stuff like that. And have a kind of a life within Street Fighter six. I'm like, interesting but I'm not hyped. And that was weird. I was starting to say to myself, maybe maybe I'm just an old school Street Fighter guy. I'm getting older, you know, I'm not you know, getting down with the new kind of things like Street Fighter 6. That was until I saw the last trailer. And I was absolutely blown away by it. They showed more characters. E. Honda was there, Dalsim was there, Blanca was there. I was like, okay, I feel a little bit at home here. And then they start to show you about the customization of making your own character. And like, wa wa walking around the world and getting into fights with people. I was like, this is kind of interesting. This is a good shakeup. Because when I got Street Fighter V, it was probably the most disappointing night of my video gaming career, honestly. I bought the game, I was so excited, I brought it home. I put it in, and all of a sudden, the servers were all down, so I couldn't play online. There was no single player mode. All I could do was a tutorial. Do you know how boring that is? But this game, Street Fighter 6, they are looking to completely get rid of that. So if you're just a, like a single person, you want to play by yourself, you can do that. And it looks like they've given you a lot of options to walk around this world and interact and go online. And what the other thing, you can just go into an arcade and play the game and just play other arcade games, classic Capcom arcade games. I thought it was absolutely cool, fresh. I think it's a fresh take on Street Fighter. It doesn't really give me that World Warrior feeling yet. You know, I need to see some more characters. I like what's there though. Ken's character, I must admit, I don't really, he looks like a Conan the Barbarian for me. And I like Conan the Barbarian. I just don't know if I want him in my Street Fighter games. So, because Ken's my favorite character of all time in Street Fighter. So I'm very judgmental on Ken. I like Ken in Street Fighter V. I thought they did a good job with him for sure. Um, this one, I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I remember when Street Fighter IV was announced and they showed the early characters. I'm like, ooh. They look kind of like barbarian-ish, and then they kind of made them more anime-ish, and I was kind of happy. Uh, this one, like, the characters are so pumped, it's, like, ridiculous. But I'm super hyped about Street Fighter Six. What do you guys think? Are you excited about Street Fighter Six? I haven't really even been talking to anybody online about it or anything like that, so I don't know anybody's thoughts on the matter, so let me know. Next up, Breath of the Wild 2. I know, like a lot of you out there, we're all damn hyped for this game. We're all absolutely waiting for it. Tears of the Kingdom is the official title. And I was like, I kind of like that title. It works for me. They didn't show too much gameplay or anything like that. They're still keeping it all in the dark. And I tell you, my prediction is this. There'll be a Nintendo Direct after Christmas time, maybe even just a little bit before, uh, just to get you hyped up for the next uh, Breath of the Wild. This prediction may be wrong, but what I'm thinking, there's probably in like May, when the, the game comes out, May 2023, I'm wondering if there's going to be another Switch model, like a brand new version of it, because they might release it on that and on the regular Switch. 
at the same time. It's just a pattern that Nintendo's been doing over the years. And I'm thinking, are they going to do that? Remember when uh, Breath of the Wild was released on the Wii U and on the Switch at the same time? So will they do the same thing again? I I'm just speculating. I haven't read anything. I don't know anything. I'm just wondering if that's the thing that they'll do. And I wonder if Metroid Prime 4 will also be an early launch window title game for like a Switch 2, if we'll call it that, or you know, Switch Pro, whatever we're gonna call this new machine, I don't know. That's my speculation right now. And it, Nintendo's gone very quiet. They're super quiet. So I think that they're cooking a lot of stuff. I think some games that they were bringing for Switch, they're like, no, we might bring them to the next uh, generation console. It's about that time. Do you think that's true? I don't know. I know I'm keeping asking you guys, but I'm so curious if you think like I do on this one, is a new Switch machine coming in 2023? We'll, we'll have to find out. Octopath Traveler 2, that's only a great thing. I mean, when that game came out, a certified classic was born and more of, more of that is only a good thing. And I kind of like the graphical style of this new game. It's kind of like a bit of a Victorian edge in there going on and a little bit of steampunk happening, especially with the clothing designs. I thought it was pretty cool and I'm looking forward to, to seeing more information on that game as it comes out. And then a new Fire Emblem. Is it Fire Emblem Engage? I'm engaged into this. I'm really, really looking forward to this. I love Fire Emblem. I really love Three Houses. I thought that was a really, really good game. And I think for strategy players out there, I think we were all very, very impressed with that game. So more Fire Emblem is only a good thing. It's an interesting one because it looks like they're bringing characters from the past into this game. I don't know how that gets implemented exactly, but it was neat to see Marth back. And it's gonna be interesting to see how this game pans out, but obviously a must buy is especially that special edition i'm like yep we're definitely getting this and there's another little small game that was shown to be coming to the nintendo switch and that is tunic we've been playing that on game pass rob absolutely loved that game he thought it was incredible and i played a bit of it and i thought it was really really good as well it's nice it's coming to switch so a lot of other players can try it out there and i, I don't know how the port's gonna be but from what i see it looks pretty good now at the time of doing this video there was a certain announcement and a lot of people were tweeting to me about it and i'm like yeah i've got to come in and talk about this can you believe it we're getting two remasters of two classic rpgs from the playstation one era they're quite expensive to buy on their own they, they have been on psn Remasters of Sui Coden 1 and 2. I love this series, and I gotta say, there was a few Sui Codens after these, obviously, but it was always the first game and the second game, and the second game is a bit expensive now. So I think this is gonna be a really great way with these remasters for more players to try these games out because they are classics of our time. Oh my God, Sui Coden 1 and 2 are so great. I think people ask why, I'll just say that the story's really engaging, collecting all the characters is really engaging. Fast combat. You're in and out really quick. And back in the day, that was a really big thing. You didn't want to be sitting in combat for like an hour per combat. So these things you're like in and out. It's like, it was great. So high recommendations for checking the remasters out. I haven't played them myself, but I'm saying if you want to know what the Sweet Code and series is all about, this looks like the real way to jump in. Okay, I would have to talk about this. God of War Ragnarok. I cannot believe, do you know what the thing is? I cannot believe this game is coming out this year. This is the kind of game you think, yeah, that'll be out in two years. And I was like, nope, it's coming this Christmas. I'm like, I cannot wait to play this. The God of War series is just remarkable, especially the last couple of them have been unbelievable. The PS4 one blew my mind. I reviewed that in the channel. I was totally taken back by it. And this new one is just continuing on the story and about a you know, father and his son, it's that kind of story. But man, the gameplay, the monsters, the world environments, I can't wait to play it on PS5. It just looks stunning. And that's a game I'm really, really hyped for. And as I say, I cannot believe it's coming this year. Like, how is that even possible? We will make our own destiny. Now I'll end with talking about this. It's a game called Various Day Life. And I was just checking out the trailer this morning and I was watching this and I'm like, nobody's talking about this. This is kind of an interesting game by the producers of Bravely Default and Octopath Traveler. And it has that 
aesthetic to it, right? The character designs, all that kinds of stuff. And it looks really interesting for an RPG and kind of say, they're trying to say, you're living in a normal world, you know? And I'm like, okay, this looks really good. And it's one of those ones I'm gonna follow to see where it goes and to see how it pans out. Because it seems that it's one of those real underground games that nobody's talking about. Everybody's talking about Fire Emblem and Breath of the Wild 2 and all, obviously all those games, but nobody's talking about this. And I think it's a really interesting looking game and one that I'm definitely looking forward to. And I'll just say this much, I'll end this way. 2022, great year for games. 2023, the beginning, it's gonna be an overload. There's so much stuff coming that it's gonna be like, oh my God, how can I play all of these games? Where there's a will, there's a way. And I will make sure that there's a way for sure for all of these games. I mean, when I think about all these games, I really generally get excited. When I think about the new Fire Emblem, I'm like, we get a new Fire Emblem, that's awesome. I'm telling you, uh, you know, for whatever system that you have, there's so many great games on every system now, on every system. I mean, what's not to like about video games, that's for sure. So guys, tell me what games are you looking forward to that are coming up this year or next? Let me know down below. So anyways, guys, until next time.